Hey guys, this is Chris here with UniqueSquared.com. These are my hands, and this is my marker board. Together we are going to show you some of the basics of setting up your PA system with speakers and an amplifier. I'll be talking about watts, ohms, bridged mono, and what it all means. Now I'm gonna try to keep things simple because this can get really confusing. Um, but before we begin, you need to know about ohms and watts. Now, ohms are all about resistance to electricity. Everything has ohms, including you. If something has a lot of ohms, it means electricity has trouble getting through. If it has less ohms, that means electricity runs through it really easily. Uh, a thick piece of rubber, for example, has a lot more ohms than a metal pole. Um, also, for our purposes today, resistance and impedance mean the same thing, and they are both measured in ohms. Okay, now watts. Watts are all about power. More power equals more watts. Enough said. All right, let's get started. I recently got a pair of JBL JRX 125s from UniqueSquared.com. They each have a horn and two 15-inch speakers, and I think they sound really good, but they're unpowered or passive, so I had to find an amp before I could get any sound out of them. The first thing I did was find the specs of the speakers. With the specs pulled up, I was only interested in a couple of numbers, the nominal impedance and the power capacity. With that information, I was ready to choose an amp. Now there's two main rules of thumb when choosing an amp. First rule of thumb, get an amp that's 50% more powerful than your speakers. When your amp sends watts to your speakers, it's making them work. Their job is to pump out the sound. The more watts they get, the more work they have to do. Your speaker can only do so much work over a long period of time. Um, remember our spec sheet? There were two numbers. One was the power capacity, which was 500 watts for the JRX 125. Other spec sheets might call it continuous power capacity, RMS power handling, or program watts. Um, but they all mean the same thing. You're going to want to ignore the peak power capacity. If I tried to play 2000 watts out of my JBLs, I would probably blow them to smithereens. It's way too much work for them to do. But 500 watts? They can play 500 watts 24-7, no problem. Now your amp needs to be 50% more powerful than your speakers for the same reason. Well, basically the same reason. Because your amp is also doing work. Its job is to pump watts to your speakers. Think of it this way. If you're on foot, you can walk a lot further than you can run before you're completely exhausted and have to stop. So if my amp is rated at 800 watts, pushing a 500 watt speaker will be equivalent to an easy paced walk. But if it's rated at 500 watts, pushing a 500 watt speaker would be more like the equivalent of a strenuous run. You'd be pushing it to its limits and it would wear out pretty quickly. Now, whatever you do, do not, I repeat, do not underpower your speakers unless you want to ruin your amp. Bottom line. So since my pair of JRX 125s each had a power capacity of 500 watts and a four ohm load, I was looking for an amp that could push at least 750 watts per channel in a four ohm load. Now we're getting back into ohms, and so that brings me to the second rule of thumb. Match your speaker's ohms to the ohms that your amp can handle. Now amps are generally designed to work with four, eight, and 16 ohm speakers, but it's very important to know exactly what your amp can handle. If your speaker's ohms are too low for your amp, you run the risk of blowing out your speakers and frying your amp completely. Please don't make that mistake. Now, if your speaker's ohms are too high for your amp, you won't get much sound out of your speakers. It's not as bad, but it's still not good. So since I've got two speakers with a nominal impedance of four ohms, I need an amp capable of handling four ohms. But remember the first rule of thumb, I also need 750 watts to power my speaker. So I need 750 watts in a four ohm load. That's why I decided to go with an XTI 2002 from Crown to power my JBL speakers. As you can see on the spec sheet, it's capable of pushing 800 watts in a four ohm load per channel, which means per speaker, left and right. 
and honestly, I couldn't ask for a more perfect match. I've even got 50 extra watts of power per speaker. And now, as you can see on the spec sheet, it's even capable of handling an impedance of two ohms, which is handy. Why? Well, so far, I've only talked about a two speaker setup, one per each channel. But what if I wanted to add more speakers? Well, before I do that, I need to make sure that it has the same impedance rating as the speakers I've already got. Since my JBLs have an impedance rating of four ohms, any speakers I add must also have a four ohm impedance rating. Uh, let's say I add one extra speaker to each channel in parallel, giving me a total of two speakers per channel. Now to calculate the new impedance load of your speakers, it's really easy. You just divide your speaker's impedance rating, which is four ohms in our case, by the number of speakers you have. Now the new load per channel comes to two ohms. And that's a low number of ohms, but it's cool because I've checked the spec sheet of my amp and I know that I'm in the clear and I know that it can handle an ohm load that small. Now, a lot of amps also have an option for bridged mono. What is bridged mono? Well, rather than taking two inputs and sending amplification to the left and right channels like you would in stereo mode, you are getting one input and combining the power of the left and the right channels into one super powerful channel. Okay, so I've been talking about amp setups in stereo. Here I've got my mixer board, the back of my amplifier, my two speakers, and the front of my amplifier. As you can see, I'm in stereo mode. I have two inputs coming from the mixer, and I have two outputs as well. Each output has a red and black post. Red for positive, black for negative. Both the left and the right channels should be at the same volume, and as you can see, I have them cranked all the way up. But that's just my personal preference. You can have them at whatever volume you want. The bridged mono setup looks a little different. Now, the first thing I've done here is I've flipped the switch from stereo to bridge mono, which is very important. I still have my mixer, but this time I'm running through a crossover. Why? You don't usually want to run your high frequency speakers in bridge mono unless you got a really big setup. I've got it running to my sub. Now what's crossover? Well, it's basically a device that lets you separate different frequencies. In this case, it's singling out the bass completely and cutting out the mids and the highs. You can see that there is only one input from my crossover to my amp. There's no second input because we're going in mono, which means one channel. Now we're also bridging channels one and two into a powerful channel, like we said, so the outputs are gonna be different as well. Now the positive post on output two becomes the negative post for your powerful output, and the positive post on output one becomes the positive post for the powerful mono bridged channel. Now the volume control on channel one becomes the volume control for the entire thing. And I've got that cranked all the way up. Since I'm not using the volume knob for channel two, I just turn that all the way down. So there you have it. Now there's a lot more to this subject that I didn't have time to go over. And for some of you who know a lot about speakers and amplifiers already, this video may have been a little bit pedestrian. But hopefully for some of you beginners, um, this will help you get your PA system up and running. Uh, for great prices on speakers and amplifiers, check out uniquesquare.com. Thanks for watching. My name is Chris. We'll see you next time.